Hey guys, this is Ariel Soltura with RochReport.com. Coming to you today with a real, real special treat, guys. Eterna Contiki Automatic Chronograph. Now, again, Eterna is a name that we've heard for years on watch forums, and it's definitely a brand that's loved worldwide, but it is a brand that's seldom seen here in the States. As luck would have it, a friend of mine was actually chasing his own grail, making this watch available for my wrist, for my watch box, and for you guys to review alongside with me today, which is pretty cool. Now, Eterna was founded in 1856, and upon its startup, it started making wrist watches for women out of pocket watches, which back then, of course, was pretty revolutionary. Fast forward a couple more years, 1932 comes around, and Eterna makes the now very famous ETA, providing watch parts and components for other watch manufacturers. 2014 comes around, and I guess you could say the rest is Eterna history. Now, one thing I do want to mention before we start into the official a review is that I want you to click the link at the bottom of this page. Now that's going to take you back to watchreport.com and it's going to have my full review, thoughts, comments, and pictures about this totally awesome and cool watch. So again, please click the link and make sure to subscribe to the Watch Report YouTube channel. All right, so let's dive in, guys. You're going to have the case diameter on this uh, on this Eterna Contiki Automatic Chronograph is going to be 42 millimeters. 42 millimeters, guys, seems to be the sweet spot for the majority of watch enthusiasts out there. So, uh, Turner made a watch that's definitely very wearable. We'll talk about the specs here in just a second, why it's so wearable, but again, it starts off at a really nice 42 millimeter case diameter. The height is going to be 15.8, so almost a good solid 16 millimeters on this. But again, um, just real, real nice specs. The lugs, Gonna be real happy about this. The lugs are 22 millimeters. So again, making it a dream come true for those that want to change straps, those that love changing straps as most as most watch enthusiasts do. 47 millimeters, guys. 47 millimeters is gonna be your lug to lug. Again, making it the sweet spot for the majority of wrists out there. Of course, this is the bracelet option. It does come with a, a calf strap option, uh, which is mostly gonna be found in your black dialed. Uh, Eterna Contiki Automatic Chronograph. Now the movement chosen for this one is an ETA, no surprise there, an ETA Calibre 7750, again chosen for its uh, capabilities, um, for, uh, for its chrono capabilities, excuse me. The crystal on this is a uh, sapphire, we'll do anti-reflective coating, and uh, the retail price is $4,595 USD. So let's uh, capture the watch here in a couple of uh, different angles because one of the things that I love about this watch is that it has a lot of brushed and polished edges that refracts the light in the most uh, awesome of ways. Just a real cr uh, uh, awesome looking watch. It's clear, it's crisp, and uh, again, because of its light refraction, because of the both uh, polished and brushed edges, you're going to get a watch that's going to definitely... I say attract a lot of positive attention. Um, if you're a watch enthusiast, you're gonna love it. If you're uh, somebody that, that isn't really a watch enthusiast, um, but just likes the look of watches, you're gonna love this watch. This is definitely a watch for, um, I say a watch for all people. You'll see that the case does have the slightest lug curvature. Um, I definitely think that it's not anything that's gonna make a real impact on its wearability. Um, because I think that's mostly due to the fact that it is 42 millimeters, that it is 47 millimeter lug to lug, that it has the 22 millimeter straps. That's going to add to its wearability. So um, you'll see that the case back, let me get a shot of it here. The case back does sit um, about even, just maybe slightly lower than the lug. So again, it's going to sit flat, uh, pretty flat on your wrist, guys. Um, and I think that, again, adds to its wearability. But the lug curvature, that slight lug curvature, isn't really making a big impact on that. Again, talking about the, uh, the brushed and polished edges, you'll see that the case has a really nice brushed edge that meets up with another polished edge. And then um, another couple of uh, brushed right here where the, uh, where the lugs are is brushed. And then it incorporates back into the uh, bezel, which is a high polish. Now, I think that this shares aesthetically the look of two of my favorites, two of my personal grails, which is the Rolex Milgauss and the Omega Aquaterra. I, I think it's, it's, while it's not in any way, shape, or form an imitation of either, um, it's not trying to look like either. I think it's just a sporty case uh, that 
aesthetically shares some of the same features and and i'm just fine with that again those are two of my grails but so is this so definitely happy to have this one in the uh in the watch box as i mentioned earlier let's uh take it off of the pillow here guys if i can capture a couple more shots of it let's see if i can extend it out for you guys there Just a really beautiful watch, guys. Um, again, something that, that I can't get enough of, of looking, and I think that that if you're looking at this review, it's something that's definitely uh, captured your your um, your watch interest, and I think that it's definitely going to be a pleasure for you to own as well. Let me go ahead and show you the, the bracelet here. The bracelet does taper ever so slightly, and it comes into its Eterna Fold Over clasp. Um, it is one of the best clasps that I've owned. Um, get it closing there a couple times. There it is. Nice and secure. You'll see the Eterna branding right there with its five pentagonal circles right above it. It is a double pushover uh, clasp. Push button clasp, excuse me. And the bracelet is a brushed bracelet. Let me unscrew the crown for you guys. This crown is a screw down crown given it its 200 meter water resistance. One of the things that I do mention uh, real briefly in the review, but it's something that I think is pretty nice. Um, you'll notice that when I wind it in the opposite direction as I'm doing right now, it'll do a series of crisp clicks. Now it's kind of reminiscent of when I was a kid and I would go to the, uh, to the wooden roller coaster here in Houston. Um, it used to be the, um, uh, the highlight of the park, and I would love uh, riding it. And as as you're hitting uh, hitting the top, you would hear it go click, 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 and you knew something good was coming, which was obviously the drop. Well, this does um, the same thing. I'll I'll be quiet here for just a second, see if I can get it to come out on this on this video. Pretty loud and, and distinct, especially um, for this movement. But it's something that I, that I absolutely love. Let me take it out here in the time setting position. I'll give it a couple of nice uh, turns here so you can see the time setting function. A couple times in reverse. And I'll put it here at a time where I can set the date. Now the date, um, excuse me, the date, just the slightest flicker is gonna set the date, guys. Watch this. Boom. Another date change. Another date change. Not a whole lot of uh, finger action needed for this. Date change, date change. Now you'll see the date is actually a bright white as opposed to Eterna's uh, cream colored dial. We'll talk about the dial here in just a second, but I just wanted to mention it since we're on the, uh, on the date setting function. Let me go ahead and screw it back down. There you go. We'll talk about the chrono features that are obviously set at the two and the four. Now it would seem that the that the watch has screw down pushers, but it does not. That's uh, was merely done, I think, by Turner for aesthetic reasons. It does look nice, but as far as functionality, they don't actually serve a purpose. Um, let's go ahead and get the chrono started. You'll notice it just uh, left the twelve. It's passing the five now. And we'll let it get a, about a nice 30 seconds, so that way I can show you guys the, the really nice hard reset and how, how nice it lines up with the 12. So there it is, passing the 15. Passing its, uh, its date position at the 4. It's making a turn around the, the Swiss made logo. We're going to stop it right here at the, at the 30, or at the 6. Let's give it a nice hard reset. Let's see if I can get that to show up on camera. Really nice hard reset, everything lines up as it should. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, I said we talk about the dial a little bit, so let's go ahead and talk about that. Um, it's a little bit of debate between watch enthusiast friends of mine. You'll notice the chrono circles are positioned at the 12, the 6, and the 9. And then you also have the Eterna triangles, which are, guys, I think it's going to be a real treat for you guys once you get this on the wrist, but it is full loomed. Uh, triangles, but you'll have them at the 12, you'll have them at the 3, at the 6, and the 9. So the debate is whether these particular circles clutter up the dial or not. I can tell you guys that in my opinion, it does not clutter up the dial in any way. 
And of course, that a watch that hovers somewhere around the $5,000 mark uh, retail, it's definitely something that I like to see. I think it shows a lot of elegance. Uh, it shows a lot of class and uh, it is very unique. So again, it's something that I like to see, especially when one goes out and finds this watch uh, retail. So something that is, uh, that is pretty, pretty nice. The engine that just got everything started that keeps this, this guy ticking is that Calibre 7750 that we talked about earlier. It does beat at 28,800 beats per hour, and it gives it a real nice, healthy 44-hour power reserve. So again, something that should last you the whole weekend, especially if you're definitely using it the way that you should. This should be um, a watch. I know it is for me that I wear quite often. Hardly ever leaves my wrist. And, uh, and so as far as the power reserve, I'm always uh, giving a little bit of power reserve back. So pretty, pretty nice. The case back, we'll mention it real briefly, but it is something that gives it its actual name. Is the uh, Contiki raft that Thor and his crew were able to use uh, during the expedition. And of course, what is a story without a happy ending? The guy ends up making it and guess what watch he's wearing? An Eterna. That's right, you guys guessed it. So I'll talk a little bit about how and why this was actually named the Contiki and a little bit more about the expedition in my review. Again, guys, this is just a great watch that I believe is gonna flow seamlessly with you. Um, you know, whether you're in the office and then you decide, hey, okay, I've had a tough day at the office, I'm gonna go to the pool. And then after the pool, you're gonna go out maybe to a nice pub or a nice speakeasy and, and kind of hang out. Or, or really, if you just wanna hang out at the house with, with your wife and, and just watch TV, this is definitely a, um, a sporty case that's gonna go with you wherever it is that you decide to go. And as far as the retail price, that 4,595, I think that a real quick search, guys, is gonna yield a lot of results that are gonna make this watch um, a little bit more affordable than, than, than you might think it is. So, a really nice watch. Hope you enjoyed the review, but before I go, make sure, again, to click the link at the bottom of this page uh, so you can go to my full review and that you subscribe to the Watch Report YouTube channel. So this is Ariel Soltura signing off and see you next time on watchreport.com.